At this unprecedented moment in American history, when we're trying to address the crisis of climate change, guarantee health care for all, and pass real immigration reform, the last thing we need, don't let it happen, please. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. So let's go over the very important stimulus check news. Nancy Pelosi and senators in Congress want to include more relief into the new reconciliation bill. Pelosi now faces a tightening squeeze between progressive and moderate Democrats over passing two key elements of President Biden's economic agenda. Progressive lawmakers say they will vote down the Senate passed infrastructure bill unless it is linked to a multi-trillion dollar social safety net bill. That includes expanding health care, paid leave benefits, tackling climate change, and raising taxes on the wealthy. From the very beginning, my stated goal for the July and August work period has been that the Senate pass both a bipartisan infrastructure bill and a budget resolution. But now nine moderate Democrats say they will not vote to begin writing the $3.5 trillion bill until the House passes the infrastructure legislation the Senate passed last week and then sends it to Biden's desk. The party is fighting over legislation. For the most part, the Democrats agree that they should pass. But the order in which the bills move through Congress has become a battle between moderates and progressives who are jockeying, who are holding to maximize their leverage to shape both bills. For months, Pelosi has vowed to take the path preferred by her liberal members, which is backed by the White House. And so I'm calling on private insurance companies. Don't hide behind the fine print and a technicality. Pay what you owe your customers. Cover temporary housing costs and natural disasters and help those in need. That's what we should all be doing now. But she has a long track record of working to protect the moderate fraction. The moderate faction of her caucus, whose political futures are likely to determine whether she remains in control of the House. Pelosi has suggested a way out Sunday in a letter to caucus, in a letter to her colleagues, in a letter to her colleagues, the rules of committee could set up a process to advance both measures at the same time. Her deputy chief of staff, Drew Hamill, said her position has not changed. The House will not vote on final passage of the infrastructure bill until the Senate passes the other spending bill, and this is a process that could still take weeks. But the nine moderates appeared to reject that approach, saying in a joint statement that they appreciate her offer, but that their view remains consistent on passing infrastructure first. Both packages are popular and Democrats plan to run on them in the midterms, hoping voters will report, hoping voters will reward them for delivering results. House Democrats adopted a budget resolution that is needed to unblock a filibuster-proof $3.5 trillion package of domestic spending and tax breaks and teed up a vote on the Senate bipartisan infrastructure bill next month. The 220-212 vote capped off an eventful 24 hours of negotiating between Democratic leaders and a group of 10 party moderates who had planned to vote against the budget unless the infrastructure vote came first. And while they did not get that demand met, they did get the leadership to agree to holding the infrastructure vote no later than September 27th, a few days before, a few days before the surface transportation authorizations are set to expire on October 1st. The budget was deemed adopted when the House adopted a rule setting debate parameters for the Senate passed infrastructure bill and voting rights legislation. The rule also included the rule also included language that ensures the infrastructure bill will be brought to the floor by September 27th. The final rule the House adopted was the third iteration reported out of the rules committee during the flurry of negotiations. The chamber passed the voting rights measure later Tuesday before recessing until September 20th. Leadership is hoping to have the reconciliation package, which committees have a September 15th deadline to assemble. Ready, to ready for floor action around the same time as the infrastructure bill with the goal of, both, of passing both by the end of September. Now the tight timeline indicates leadership has backed off its previous strategy. Nancy Pelosi has been saying for months that the House now vote on the infrastructure bill until the Senate passed the reconciliation package. But the House is expected to vote on reconciliation before the Senate does. And the Senate may not have time to weigh in on reconciliation before the September 27th deadline for the House infrastructure vote. Although the IRS began sending out checks months ago, there are still many more direct deposits going out and payments being mailed. In fact, as recently as July 21st, the IRS announced it had distributed another $2.2 million in stimulus payments. 
This money went to people who had not gotten any stimulus payments before, as well as the people who owed plus up payments. Plus up payments are additional stimulus checks for people who had received less than the full amount due in their first payment. So the IRS is still distributing payments into people's bank accounts because it's working, it is working through a backlog of 2020 tax returns. That's all the news in this video folks. If you guys find this video useful and helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends and family. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Until next time, have a great day and stay safe. We're, we're going to be falling <laughs> given given a uh, representative given the pretext that what you are all describing is a a cultural war a spiritual battle indigenous sovereignty is linked with george floyd this city indigenous sovereignty we recognized Americans right to have any legitimacy or claim to even exist in our homeland. It's tied to the ban on the entire Muslim faith flying into our country. It's, it's tied to the Zionist instigation of the Nakba, which for my people, we were removed from this territory in 1862. So I know you are all walking a very fine line within the Democratic Party, and I would like to know how you are uh, willing to, your willingness to come here means that you're willing to compel our colleagues there who sometimes have to be pushed and prodded into progressive stances. And I'm, I'm speaking about Gina McCarthy, speaking about sister Peggy Flanagan. There's only so much that real progressive people can do within the DNC. So how is that fight or struggle going for you all? The fight and the struggle continues. I'm sure my, my sisters can add to this. Um, what, what we are able to do is to stand on our principles. Uh, continue to advocate for those who have entrusted their votes and voices onto us be a voice for them um, in rooms where decisions are being made about them without them. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to do that. I can't speak for why others haven't stood up for those that have believed in them, that have invested in them, and the people that they said that they were going to fight for. But what I can speak to is that you are never going to experience that with me and those that stand here with me today. And with that, thank you.